The Battle for a Pirate Haven on Galveston Island. When discussing the history of pirates and privateers in Galveston, two prominent names often come to mind, Louis-Michel Ari and Jean Lafitte. Jean Lafitte's role on Galveston Island usually overshadows Louis-Michel Ari's, as Jean Lafitte was the longest reigning and final pirate to control Galveston Island. But when it comes to history, there's always more to the story. And this story deals with overthrowing governments, controlling the Gulf of Mexico, and maintaining control of the strategic island of Galveston. Thank you to our video sponsor, The Daily News, Texas' oldest newspaper, bringing you the news since 1842. Support your local newspaper, The Daily News. Louis-Michel Ari and Jean Lafitte. These historical figures played crucial roles in shaping the island's identity as a haven for pirates and privateers in the early 19th century. Although their activities may blur the lines between piracy, privateering, and slave trading, the stories of Ari and Lafitte shed light on the complex history of Galveston Island. Louis-Michel Ari, born in Paris in 1788, started his maritime career by serving in the French Navy and privateer ships. His experience allowed him to amass enough wealth to become master of his own vessels. Ari, however, didn't fit the traditional image of a pirate. He was, in fact, a privateer sanctioned by recognized governments to attack ships belonging to enemy nations. These individuals were often referred to as pirates with papers. Ari's privateering activities primarily targeted Spanish shipping, motivated by a desire to free Mexico from Spanish rule. In September 1816, Ari arrived in Galveston, marking the first establishment of a privateer government on the island. He established a settlement on the eastern end of Galveston Island and commanded eight ships as well as cannon batteries. Ari immediately began establishing a privateer government he organized various governmental departments to speed up the progress of the privateers on Galveston. Ari appointed a collector of revenue and customs. Ari also established a makeshift admiralty court to make sure any disputes were settled. This privateer colony on Galveston Island was ethnically diverse, which is highlighted in the fact that 200 black seamen in Ari's camp mounted an insurrection, which temporarily held up the establishment of a privateer government. His conquest in the Gulf included capturing Spanish galleons and reselling their cargo of enslaved people in Louisiana, and then sharing the profits with his men. The enslaved people would be brought to Galveston and then shipped by land to Louisiana. The importation of enslaved people from other countries was made illegal in the United States in 1808, but the domestic slave trade in the southern United States was strong. The enslaved people who were captured at sea would be brought back to Galveston and then shipped by land to Louisiana to either be turned in for a bounty at a customs house or sold at an open slave market with forged documents, a business model that would soon be repeated by Jean Lafitte only a few years later. Enslaved people were not the only cargo that Ari would capture. Like any pirate or privateer, they would take anything of value. Ari's control of the island was challenged when revolutionist Francisco Javier Mina arrived on Galveston Island in November 1816 with about 140 officers and men. Initially at odds, Ari and Mina eventually worked together to undermine Spain's control of the region. Their forces grew to around 300 soldiers and a dozen ships, leaving a skeleton crew on the island. Upon returning, he found that Jean and Pierre Lafitte had taken control of the island, and he was unable to regain his position. Jean and Pierre Lafitte, the most well-known of the Galveston pirates, had been kicked out of Louisiana for their smuggling and piracy activities. And although Jean Lafitte assisted the U.S. government in defeating the British during the War of 1812, the Louisiana and United States government had had enough, forcing the brothers to take their operation elsewhere. And just a few hundred miles away from New Orleans was the barely protected Galveston Island, perfectly situated in under-patrolled Spanish territory. Ari left valuable real estate behind to pursue other ventures. While Ari's activities combined privateering and piracy, the Lafitte brothers leaned more towards piracy. They swore allegiances as agents for Spain and established a smuggling operation on the island. They even renamed the settlement as Campeche. The Lafitte brothers operated in Galveston from 1817 to 1820 until the United States Navy arrived and kicked them out of Galveston. Lafitte ordered that the entire pirate colony be burned. The activities of Ari the Lafitte brothers and their associates on Galveston Island continue to spark debates about whether they were pirates, privateers, or revolutionaries. 
their stories reveal the complex nature of maritime activities in the early 19th century and their lasting impact on Galveston's history. The history of Galveston Island is woven with the exploits of Louis-Michel Ari, Jean Lafitte, and their associates. These individuals navigated the fine line between piracy and privateering, challenging conventional definitions, and leaving behind an intriguing legacy of controversy. While the debate about their true nature continues, their stories remain an integral part of Galveston's history, illustrating the complex dynamics of piracy and privateering in the early 19th century.